one. All right, we are here in week five for our feature matches. Our first one tonight is between, well, as you can see, Jordan J.M. Tron and Christopher G. Oompa Loompa. I'm going to be watching Jordan's side of the th side of things. Justin's going to be looking at Christopher's hand. Uh, these are both players we've had in the feature matches already. Uh, Jordan had a, a salt tie sort of graveyard self mill, uh, lots of things that cared about things being in the graveyard, and uh, Christopher we saw last week with his uh, green blue base, uh, but really just a, a domain deck, and we saw a very unlikely uh, unlikely win last week. Uh, you can go go check on YouTube to see all about that. Um, so what's going on in Christopher's hand uh, this game? Uh, he, well, he seems to have a very land-heavy hand. He now has, like, six lands, a Battlewing Mystic, and a Territo Mar Territorial Morrow. Okay. And out of those lands, he only has three colors, so the Morrow will be too big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these so these players are mostly um, showing up with the same decks we saw them with uh, last week and two weeks ago. Uh, Jordan did have to mulligan here. We see two uh, two more lands in his hand, both tap lands, so it's going to be a little slow getting going. But he does have Arona's Vortex, a Terra Sunder, and a Borduk, Bortuk bone rattle all very powerful cards it's just gonna you know his lines are coming to play tapped so it'll take a little while to deploy them but uh you know he has what to do for the next few turns after that okay so interestingly enough he drew the impulse as you see he's casting it and he has a choice between a ley line binding and silver scrutiny i think he's just gonna take the scrutiny just because like he has not much to do and you know card draw will find him more stuff to do whereas because i'm sure there's more removal in his deck than just a ley line binding yeah, so, uh, well, green, blue, I think, which are his base colors, um, you know, they don't always get the best removal, but in, in this set, they do have, uh, you know, you do get bite down. So, uh, yeah. you know, he, he, he's just opting for the card that's gonna, gonna find him more cards rather than one card that's gonna answer one card. He'd rather just take a card that can get him two, three, or four more cards later. Uh, yeah, exactly. I needs. think it's just, it's just better in the long run. Because the Leyline Binding basically just counts on him to draw effective spells. And the Silver Scrutiny is like, I'll have more chance of finding more effective spells if I just draw more cards than my opponent. Yeah, I've seen a lot of matches so far this week uh, being streamed. And uh, I think the last two weeks are going to be a lot of these mirror-type matches. So it's, it's not a straight mirror match, but it's uh, you know close enough with the domain and the card draw and the efficient removal. Um, so yeah. I, I think in these matchups, it's basically, you know, did you mulligan or not? Did you find draw spells or not? Did you outcard your opponent? Who has more cards at the end of, end of the day? Yeah, the, the, the themes of the deck are going to be more or less the same. Yeah. And uh, he, here comes the Morrow, as I said, just, uh, you know, 6-6 six, six for 5. Morrow's going to, uh, disappear now, either to, uh, to the bottom of the deck or to exile, whatever, uh, Jordan decides. Assume it would be Rona's Vortex, since that hits a creature, and a Terra Sunder can, I believe, hit anything. But he's just going to yeah. Terra Sunder here. Um, for the reason that Rona's Vortex can be used as a bounce spell later if he needs it, if he needs to do something and then have one mana and, you know, maybe make a crucial attack. So, uh, you know. Yeah, it, it's flexible in that way. Because yeah. Terra Sunder, we don't see it often casted for two mana because sometimes your opponent just doesn't have an artifact or enchantment. Yeah, if, if Christopher shows up with a Jonas Codex in the next couple turns, Jordan might be... Uh, a little, a little frustrated with himself, but other than that, seemed like a seems like a safe move. So, what what are Christopher's options now that his uh, one threat was uh, was removed? well? He can he can either cast a Weaver of Blossoms and scr Silver Scrutiny for one, or he can Silver Scrutiny to just use it as an opportunity that is uh, sorcery speed. Yeah, can't imagine he's wants to play a Mana Dork and draw one card, but uh, he's playing the Mana Dork and then he'll he'll aim for more cards next turn. Yeah. Uh, I mean, right now, uh, Jordan has the initiative, and because Rootwalla has been so good in this form, I could attack basically past anything, just because oh, yeah. its activation is so strong. Like, uh, at the moment, it's giving him plus four, plus four, so nothing can really block it, and uh, I feel like there is some merit to drawing the cards now, just find an answer, because this 2-3 won't be doing much on this board. Yeah, this is... this this. This Sunbathing Ruwala is just... It's a common that's good. It's a two-drop common creature. It's good on turn two, and it's good anytime you draw in the late game. Um, 
really hard to find nowadays, honestly. And, uh, you know, often later in the league, you know, people start cutting some of their mediocre low drop creatures just because, you know, they don't do enough. But uh, I don't think Sunbathing Rootwalla is going to be going to be cut by uh, people running it right now. I mean, it, it does kind of what you always wanted to drop to do in this day and age, because as the cards get like more effects and, you know, more text, no longer those vanilla bears that were there in like the past. You're kind of just looking for the two drop to be able to do something in the late game, and you know, this is one of the better things you could ever do in the late game. So he's milled uh, with his soul tender. He's milled among other things a, a haughty gin, which we did see him use to great effect a couple weeks ago in the future match. Just uh, he stuck it as his only threat, and then protected it and uh, played a bunch of spells to get through. And he does have a Bortek bone rattle in hand, which can bring that gin right back into play. So uh, that might be the plan uh, once he once he gets his next land here. How big is the haughty gin? I believe from the small text it's a three four. I can't I can't quite uh, tell from this perspective, but uh, either way, it, it gets quite large. He's already played a couple of instants. He has a couple more in his hand, so uh, it doesn't take long. If, if if it's not if it's not arbitrarily large yet, it doesn't take too long. So yeah, he's going to take the opportunity here to draw five cards. Uh, just get yep. way way up on cards here. So Jordan's going to have to really find some some really good good things to compete with all this but he's gonna he's gonna take the chance take the opportunity to uh get rid of this weaver but it would seem christopher does have the ability to respond here or no it was just add mana <laughs> maybe he finds a one mana spell he, he did find a lot of gas but the only problem here is that he might not have the chance to deploy it as you said he had board tuck so you, you're he's basically going to go up on board four creatures to zero and Jordan has a has an essence scatter here. He doesn't have the 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 next land for uh, Vortex, but he has an essence scatter and a Ronin's Vortex. So the next two things are going to be dealt with. Oh, okay. Yeah, just uh, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. Two drop, so, three drop. So yeah, so Jordan's removal. considering maybe going for the potential two turn kill here with just pump Rootwalla and then bounce bounce whatever creature uh, Christopher plays. So this is actually, yeah, I, both creatures are going to be lethal here. I like it. I like it a lot. So Christopher, so one, sticking one thing won't be enough, and uh, Jordan does have the bounce here, so keeping that Rona's Vortex in hand, uh, mm, you know, might have been the difference here. So here's a 4-4 four, for four, 4, and whatever is follow-up, uh, one of them is going to get bounced here. Or is he going to play three things? So you said he has two removal. He has the Verona's Vortex. Well, well the essence scatter has is not really scatter, really but the thing is that both of the, the, the bo either creature is lethal here. So unless Christopher has uh, interaction, he has the bite down here. So he's actually okay. he's alive as long as Jordan does not top deck anything to deal with his one blocker. Uh, so he's got the land for the Bortuck. Okay. So that so that'll be useful. He's scanning his graveyard now to see. The only creature in there is the Rootwala and the Jin, and the Jin will be a one, two, three, four, four. So pretty, pretty big. Um, you know, Christopher does have this uh, four, four reach in his hand that's uh, open faced here, though. But yeah, uh, Bortek's uh, going to come. It's a four, four. It's going to bring along another four, four. So uh, pretty good here. But yeah. Uh... You know, this is going to be like uh, going to be quite close actually, because if uh, Jordan ever allows uh, Chris to stabilize, you know, because he drew all those extra cards, he might he, the game like might be very hard to close after this turn. Yeah. So now he's just Jordan has a tap land and a uh, and an essence scatter here. So he can use the soul tender to get to get back uh, this Bortuck here. Uh, you know, over two turns. So then the Bortex is going to bring back the Root Walla. So just little by little, get gets a value here. But uh, you know, it doesn't uh, it doesn't match up with all the cards that that Christopher found. Yeah, Chris Christopher. Oh, you don't like this yet. He found he found a land, but he also milled five spells. Put oh, five no. spells on the bottom. Namely, yeah. putting like Tatiova, herd, herd migration, so, putting like some of his strongest cards. Ether Channel are good enough to uh, to to bring out the essence scatter here. Uh, oh, here here he is, the MVP of last week. Yeah, there he is. Not, 
not quite having as much impact as last time, but uh, it's still something. So yeah, so the Soul Tender. So the Essence Scatter costing one was actually very key there because it allowed him to still use the Soul Tender. So uh, that extra text on Hadi Jin uh, always seems to, to show up just, just when you need it. All right, so the Jin's back with no Reach creature in play. So Christopher uh, has drawn for the turn. Did he find an answer? No, he has found another land. Oh. So uh, the, uh, the the island in hand is uh, open faced. So we know we're getting we're going to game two. So uh, just Jordan Jordan ha sticking the threat. So he was able to work through that that draw five with his recursion engines here between his his Bortak and then his soul tender to get back his Bortak. And even on that last turn, he drew another soul tender. So even if the game kept going past that point, it would just keep it would just keep cycling. So he, he would have another soul tender trade that off get something else yep. back so uh very very resilient uh strategy here um yeah so as as we saw uh, a couple weeks ago and uh, i believe i played him last week he's he has the salt type base uh it's it's pretty much spread across all three colors no splash but uh you know the man is good enough and he's uh has a bunch of domain payoff so he's playing all of his uh lands that touch white and red as well yeah and uh you know pretty much the same thing from last week for chris just running that like more aggressively curved uh, uh blue green deck with some white here and there. So looks like he uh, wants to bring in uh look like negate and Gaia's might. Let's see what he thinks he wants to cut here. So I, Gaia Gaia's might I find to be like you know a good card, but I feel in a domain matchup where like you're just throwing eff efficient removals at each other and like some high quality creatures the, like pump spells typically. Like, it's just, it's just not going to work out as well as you would think sometimes. He put a shore up uh, back. In, uh, he put he took the shore up out of his deck. I mean, I think maybe he noted Christopher's green blue. Maybe it doesn't have as much uh, removal. He saw a bite down there, but other than that, yeah, didn't really see anything. So the shore up uh, not not doing as much as as he would usually do. So uh, you know, good observation that his opponent's playing. Uh, you know, the two colors with. Traditionally, the least removal. Hey, funny enough, Chris put in a shore up well, because he saw all the all the interaction yeah. from uh, Jordan's side. Yeah, Jordan has uh, quite a few ways to uh, to interact with the opponent. Looks like he's thinking about either the the Gaia's mites or the bite downs as cuts. Here, one bite down, and uh, he's mulling over his last cut here. Oh yeah, because uh, Chris's deck because it leans aggressive, like it, it doesn't seem like it has the late game that a typical domain deck might have. He more has like just going for like you know the creatures that will get him value, but like he will not have like finishers besides like herd migration. He's just counting to like kind of win with just like flyers and just like yeah. getting on the board early. Yeah, that's what we saw last week. So Jordan finally decided on uh, Jodas Codex as his last uh, cut here. Okay. So uh, I don't know how much Jordan looked into Christopher's decklist, but bringing in the negate possibly is a you know show of respect to something like a herd migration, which uh, you know was not played in that first game, but uh, you know he knows he might know that he has it, and he did see that 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 X spell last game, the draw X. So it looks like both yeah. players are mulliganing here. I mean, I don't hate negate, especially in this format, yeah. especially if you're going against domain, because like you know n negate countering like. You know, a removal spell, usually a one-for-one, one, but in this situation, you want to use it to counter, like, a spell that's giving so much value. Like, you're countering, like, a draw four, which is basically just a four-for-one at that point if you countered it. Or, yeah. like, herd migration, which is, like, a five-for-one or four-for-one. So, uh, Jordan had to mulligan his one lander, and he's got, he's got a, it's, he's got a hand here of Extinguish the Light, Nial, and it was four lands, and now he's drawing a Hadi Jin and, uh, and another land here. Does he have the double blue to cast the Haughty Jin? Yep, he has an island, so next turn he'll be able to play the Jin. I mean, it won't have any power yet, um, but give him give it time. So this is exactly what Chris wants to do. He just wants to play his, his, his creatures on curve, and then maybe have some interaction, because right now he has the Broken Wings for this Haughty Jin okay. to actually get rid of it, and he could just hit him for four. And then he also has the Silver Scrutiny in hand to refill once his hand okay. is pretty empty. So the, uh, here's a plan. So he's... Just gonna attack here, threaten the pump, so he can't uh, 
He's going to flip his werewolf here. So Yeah, uh, maybe trying to get more value out of his silver scrutiny. Personally, I think I should we I would have preferred that Holly Jin just die right then and there. Just you know, sometimes the minus one instant sorceries will matter, and especially for like, you know, a salt type based deck, which will have a lot of instant sorceries that will be interacting with your opponent. Absolutely. So uh he's re taking a look at the werewolf here. He's Jordan's got uh, he's clogged on lands. He's got four lands, which is way too many, and uh, extinguish the light and a Nial. So uh, if he plays a Nial, it's uh, most likely going to get killed by the broken wings. Oh, yeah, kind of res being restricted on options has always been like you know a sign that you're not in a great spot. Just okay. So Jordan might just, he's thinking about playing his tap land here, which means that he could, the only, his only play is Extinguish the Light, uh, which gets that discount from the gym. So he looks oh, like he's to extinguish. To just, uh, all right, so this is actually going to, okay, <laughs> he almost, he almost clicked Resolve, uh, but he does have to, uh, he does have to cast his Extinguish Light before his gym dies here, so good catch by him. Um, so this yep. is so this is maybe going maybe going to work out okay for Jordan since Niall is right now better than Hadi Jin is uh, on the board, but uh, yeah for sure this four four reach and a Wallah that can pump for plus four is uh, highly problematic I would say so you know he he, he can play as Niall here but he can't block either one can't block can't block attack either. yeah. It's, it's, it's just very awkward for this card at the moment. Yeah. So luckily for, for Jordan, he's still at 17 life. He has a Shadow Prophecy in hand that can dig him uh, four cards to, okay. to find more things to do. But uh, you know, Christopher has undone his mulligan and more here with his, uh, with his draw spell. But uh, this also meant that he did not attack with the Ruwala, and he does not want Nihal to hit, so he did not attack with the 4-4. Four -four. So he's up, he's up uh, a few cards from the Silver Scrutiny, but uh, he didn't get to progress his... His, his real plan, which is, uh, you know, to attack and be aggressive. So what did he find from his uh, draw spell here? Well, he found another island, Battlewing Mystic, Shore Up, and Ether Channeler. So he'll have stuff to do for the next okay. coming turns. Oh, yeah. Lots of cheap plays, lots of things to do. And then once he's done with all the cards in his hand, he can uh, get a nice little refill there with the, with the Mystic. Yep. So Shadow Prophecy found Rona's Vortex and, and uh, three lands. So... Uh, you know, a few a few more lands off the deck hopefully means he's gonna draw more spells here. Yeah, so here here come the attacks now. Jordan knows he can't block. Okay, so unfortunate unfortunately for Chris, he drew like one of his only white cards when he has no white mana, so that won't be able to be played for a while or the, until he finds it. The leyline binding. Yes, he has found leyline binding. Good news is once he finds a, a planes, it'll cost one, but uh, until then, it's uncastable. But you know, we we know we know he has a few other things to do here. So either Chandler is going to come down. Probably. Did he draw. decide which one? Yeah. I mean, all three modes are defensible here. You didn't. You attacked with your four four sentry, which means the one one bird isn't that bad to have. Returning Niall it will obviously make it so they can't attack with it and get their value. And yeah. then drawing a card, you know, replaces itself. Yeah. As of last turn, Jordan does have the full uh, domain now with that radiant grove he played. So. uh Bouncing the Nihal is just, just a little bit of an insurance here, just to make sure he, he can't draw a card with it. Yep. All right, so I mean, like it. it's kind of, this board state's kind of a, a flipped situation from what happened last game. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, Jordan's just drawn a few too many lines. He does have Rona's Vortex and Tribute to Urborg in hand, so he's not going to die uh, quite yet. But uh, he still needs to find find more things to do here. So he's on the not die plan, which uh, he'll be able to 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 deploy this plan. But, I, mean, I I don't I I don't, he could, if he had like tribute and Rona's vortex, he could have played Nile there still. Yeah, I think he'd just rather just play both. You know, so looking probably Rona's vortex, the uh, Magnigoth Sentry, and then. Maybe hoping for the Ruwala pump so he can uh, tribute to Urborg here, since he doesn't have Kicker. That's well, the, the shore up is going to uh, put yeah, a bit of a wrench in this. That's all kinds of a mess. He's actually, uh, he's actually dead. Yeah, because he can't, he can't tribute to Urborg the the Ruwala. I think, I think he was hoping that you know he gets rid of the four four, 
and then Christopher goes to pump the Rutwala, and then he can hit it with a tribute to Urborg since he can't kick the tribute to Urborg, and uh, you know just take two. But uh, that shore up actually just meant that he was completely dead. Uh, so it looks like his shore up is coming back in uh, at the expense of a Gaia's might getting the cut here. Yeah, so just a few too many lines there for for Jordan on that mulligan and and a slow start, right? You know, Christopher yeah. did mulligan, but he did find a two drop and a three drop, uh, and then refilled his hand and found you know more things to do. So, you know, right, right on plan for Christopher and Jordan. You know, he he did find a you know he found his draw spell, his shadow prophecy, but didn't find him enough, and he was too low on life there at the end, uh, facing facing a four four and then a two two that can become a, a six six. Don't. Yeah, just keep in mind that even though the, even though League gets kind of closer and closer to a more constructed deck, it's still a limited deck at the end of the day. You still need to play stuff at the end, the king of the game and not get run over. Yeah, absolutely. We are, uh, you know, we are in week five, so these decks are are very very finely tuned here uh, at this point. But you know, we're we're still playing limited at the end of the day. You still need to just play things on turn two a lot of the time. Uh, in some matchups, maybe not, but, uh, you know, even though Christopher's deck is, you know, falls into this domain pile sort of thing, he is leaning more aggressive. He does want to get, get stuff in play early where maybe other right. decks don't, don't need to, or don't want to as much. Yeah. Cause most thoughts of when, most thoughts when you're playing domain is like, oh, there's going to be like, you know, these late game monsters, they just get playing like removal to survive. And if that was the case, both players would be fine if either of them had a f slow start, because then it'd just be a battle of the end game. But obviously, because Chris is going the d basically a different approach, he basically just it's punishing for the opponent if they don't actually have a fast anything in the at the beginning. Yeah, but I mean, you also have to draw the right colors and the and the two and three drops as well. So it's it's yeah. a balance there. Uh, I mean, we also saw like he had a slow start at the beginning in game one, which let his opponent you know get to his late game power spike essentially. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's thinking about writhing necromass here as just another big, big threat. Um, you know, Jordan for his deck being, you know, powerful and having lots of lots of ways to two for one and get value. His creatures are actually not that large outside of his one Talarian Terror and his Yavamaya Sojourner. So he said maybe get a, a little bit more beef here, a five five harder to kill for a green blue deck. Uh, you know, how are they going to kill a five five Death Touch? Not as many ways as as killing his other creatures. So he he has gone just to beef up a little bit so uh a bit of an unfortunate hand here for jordan we see the colors uh taking their taking their toll on him here he has a radiant grove and a swamp and then he has uh a handful of things that are, he won't be able to cast just yet but uh, he's kept it he does have the shadow prophecy so he's hoping the shadow prophecy can dig him uh, to where he needs but he is gonna just he did draw a three three for for two here pretty fortunate what's yeah, uh it's kind, what's kind of similar for chris's hand here? He kept like a two lander and he couldn't really cast anything. It was all blue and black lands. He did find the crystal grotto, which will help him to some extent with his color issues. But it's mostly he just needs to find that third land to be able to play his Phyrexian Espionage or his automatic library and find him uh, stuff to smooth out his hand, essentially. Yeah, that's. Uh, I, so so the, the starting hands seemed quite, quite close, actually, um, in, in, uh, in how they were. But. Uh, I think Chris's keep is a bit more defensible since he's on the draw here. Um, though Jordan has drawn a tap land here, so that will allow him to cast his Shadow Prophecy next turn and uh, just get him on board here with the the, the brawler. I'm I'm kind of curious why he chose to leave uh, this Fleur first Vine Wall on top. Like he he doesn't have the green. It's gonna be th like right. two mana O two is not the greatest of the bodies, and when you have to spend three mana for it, it's like kind of just like. You're spending a lot of mana for just not really affecting anything of the board, and like all I think he just, he just wants to find land, right? Like the Flourish Ryan will find that, but you're playing an automatic library next turn, which will have probably find you that land anyways. Yeah, so there's a good chance Jordan might just opt to use his bite down here uh, to just keep pushing damage, and then he yep. can untap and uh, you know uh, any untapped land will allow him to cast a Yavamaya Sojourner in his hand, uh, but at the very least he gets the Shadow Prophecy. Uh, if he doesn't draw land. Oh, he has scryed. Uh, he, he's currently deciding his decisions of scrying. He has a Shivan Reef and Maro revealed. 
Okay. I, I expect, like, maybe the Shivanry used to stay on top and both to stay on the bottom, but he's chosen both to stay on top. Okay, yeah, so he's going to bite down here. He's uh, got the upper hand. Uh, okay, he doesn't have an untapped land, but he can Shadow Prophecy here pre-combat in case he finds uh, another yet another color here. Um, so he's looking at Rootwalla, Erg, and then two tap lands. Um, takes on what's in his hand. I would not be surprised if he just took both the lands, but he's definitely going to take... Uh, one land. And we'll see what else. Oh, that's exactly. What are the four cards he's holding? Uh, so, yeah. So, in Jordan's hand, we have a Rona's Vortex, Hadi Jin, the Yavamaya Sojourner, and a Extinguish the Light. So, okay, so, uh, very powerful. Uh, yeah, he's going to take, uh, for sure, probably one land, and then, um, you know, me being, being, being a safe player, I'd probably just take the two lands and just say, well, at least, you know, I, I, need, I can cast the spells in my hand, but uh, we'll see what he decides here. Yeah, so Chris's left Shivan Reef on top, it, it's a bit puzzling to me because his, uh, his hand is primarily green cards, okay. and he has no green mana in play. Right, so you said he but, has a Vine Wall and a uh, Mar so he, he, Marrow and he's card on top. What else does he so have? He had a, so he has a Vine Wall, a Magnet Goth Sentry, a Yavimaya Iconoclast, he has Nael, oh, uh, okay. and the other the other two cards are Leyline Binding, which he cannot cast with his mana, and a Phyrexian Espionage. Yeah, and it's rude for him to scry on top if the only... I guess he's going to Espionage next turn, because Vine Wall will put the Marrow on the bottom, if which I, is probably not the uh, the desired outcome. Right, so well, he's I, I guess the... on a uh, Radiant Grove and a Root Walla here, dumping the White Black Land and the uh, the Spawn of Turg. I just opt to play Iconoclast for three mana here, just to have a blocker against yeah. this Brawler. Yeah, the thing is, is that uh, Jordan has the Extinguisher Light and the Rona's Vortex, so uh, this this Brawler might just go all the way. And now a uh, Wooded Ridge Line here. It, doesn't actually change change the clock, but uh, it's uh, you know still good. He he drew his land here. Uh -huh. so, I, I, Chris Chris is holding full control to bluff uh, that he ha he might have the shore up here. Gotta do what you gotta do, and I think Jordan has actually maybe maybe tracked that. He's a t he it took him a while to to click attack, and he's. Uh, now moused over the, the 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 blue land there to indicate. Uh, I think he's just gonna let it happen here. Oh, this is, this is a nice. This is some nice arena tech going on here. Yeah, he's just gonna let it happen. So he's just gonna let it happen and drop a four six. Uh, he w he did not want to get blown out there. Well, at the worst, it have been a two for two, but that would have relieved so much pressure. Yeah, and it would have used up Jordan's turn. He'd rather just play a 4-6 here, and then this 0-2 is going to stand in the way of it while Chris uh, sorts out his next move. Right, yeah, so, so he found he found his green source. Yeah, so he can and play... His, and his white source. So he can play Maro next turn. Though it will get hit with a removal spell unless Jordan uh, continues to live in fear of the, the shore up. So... Yeah. So Chris at least at least the Morrow option anymore since uh, he no longer possesses a creature. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Jordan, uh, he, he has still the Rona's Vortex, Haughty Jin, Extinguisher Light. He can't cast the Jin; does not have a second blue yet. Um, but he can he can come pretty close to to winning the game here, depending on what, what Christopher does. If Christopher just plays one thing. Uh, and he gets bounced and he dies, I believe. Yeah, he can run his vortex it uh, and then pump the the root wall up. But again, um, and now with this Rona's vortex and the extinguisher light, he's not as fearful as Sharp anymore because he can run his vortex at end of turn. And then if he does have the protection, which you know we know he doesn't, um, you know he can just untap extinguish the light and it's not lethal, but it still uh, you know gets the shore up out of out of the hand even though it's not there. Okay, so he he he, he moused over his Maro to it looked like he was gonna potentially play it there. Yeah, as as we know, him just tapping out for Maro will uh, will end the game. Uh, and he might he might have figured that out as well. 
you might have come to that conclusion as well that uh, tapping out for one creature is just not not going to work. Well, he's seen a lot of removal from his opponent. I, he probably like knows I play this big creature, I die. Right, so he's going for Phyrexian Espionage here. Not sure what he's looking to find. Okay, so he's going to do the Leyline Binding. Okay. The game continues. The root wall is, uh, you know, I assume he's just going to pump it up here. He has nothing else to do. He still can't cast his gin. So, yeah. Oh. Going to knock him to two. And uh, Chris okay. needs multiple, multiple creatures here. Well, he has a Frostfish Strider, which will actually buy him just a the turn regardless. Yeah, that'll work. So he's, he's, cons so he's, uh, Deciding how to tap his lands here, because uh, as we know, five color mana bases are uh, genuinely not good. Yeah, bo both these players are uh, pretty adept. You know, they 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 haven't been in the league too too long, but they both top eighted their first league, uh, and they're both in contention here. Jordan, uh, right right up there in the top eight with uh, 16, 16 wins. Uh, Christopher is thirteen and eight, but, so he hasn't played all his matches yet. Uh, so, but you know, he could he could very well uh, propel himself up there in the top eight as well. Uh, with a few wins, a few more wins this week. Yeah, so. Yeah, so just gonna, just going to play out some blockers. Not going to worry too much about uh, uh, trying to get value with the Vine Chaper Prodigy because you can't use that value if you're dead. So yeah. So what else does Christopher have? He has a Maro. What else? Do, what else is he holding? A Sentry so? and a Nile. So a handful of creatures that I can deploy if he lives okay. over time. Well, it looks like he will live. I mean. Uh, Jordan's drawn his second blue source for the Jin, but uh, it is a tap land. He does have two removals here, so he can uh, he can get rid of get rid of two things. He's looks like he's considering extinguishing the light here, uh, main phase, just to just to play around that you know that pesky shore up that Christopher uh, Christopher put the fear in him by going into full control there a few turns back. Yeah, try, it basically is is just trying to emulate. Uh... Uh, paper magic, in a way. Well, Arena it, can't really emulate paper magic, you know. We uh, yeah. Uh, are the the keeping you know passing priority automatically and keeping it when you have something, you know. If if you know a format well, you can you can narrow down the cards that they have, especially when there's only one or two mana untapped. You know, for one blue mana, the only possible things are Rona's Vortex. I think timely interference and the shore up. Actually, the f the fact they used extinguish the light here instead of uh, actually instead of the uh, Rod's Vortex actually doesn't matter. His mana does not permit him to play both of them, regardless of which one he kept. Uh, well, he could have played Haughty Jin. The thing is, he he can't play Haughty Jin and Rona's Vortex, uh, but he could have played Haughty Jin and Extinguish. Okay, yeah. See, so, so he did have four black mana. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he has lots of black mana here. Yeah, well, he had. I was more saying he had two black mana outside of the blue black lines. Okay, so it looks like he's oh. just gonna go ahead and get rid of this, and he's gonna hold up the essence scatter he just drew. Okay. It looks like it's it's a bit of a bailout because uh, because if he did his mana would be left uh, kind of stranded, he wouldn't be able to play the gin. He'd have to have no choice but just to pump the root allah, which is still fine here. Yeah. So while last time he. Uh, while in the last game he got paid off for holding on to the Rona's Vortex instead of a different removal, I think he got maybe slightly punished uh, here. But uh, the the Essence Scatter sort of bailed him out because it's it's another effective removal that he can hold up. He's considering attacking here. Um, I mean, it's a forced block, and then he won't have Essence Scatter up, so he's just not going to attack, which is which is pretty telling that he has some some form of interaction, most likely a counter spell. So that was pretty telling uh, non-attack there. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't know if uh, you ha if uh, Chris has the luxury to play around this. A, a two life can't can't be can't really ever play around an essence scatter. So uh, he just has to run it out here, and then uh, he's gonna have to put put a body in front of this root walla. So this yep. root walla is become gonna be an abyss basically, making Christopher sack a creature every turn until he can find enough power to to confront it. And it's, he's going to need seven power. Okay, the last card is played, which means uh, Jordan knows he's been bamboozled now. 
<laughs> well, I mean, he was uh, he was tapped out anyway, and then with one yeah. card in hand, he knew it was just happening anyway. So yeah, the vine shaper is gonna gonna get in the way here, and uh, you know, Niall can't even uh, dig for a card because this hottie gen is is showing up here. So um, you know, yeah. if if this hottie gen was any ground creature, he could uh, at least maybe use Niall to to find something. Oh. But, that's not okay. what a draw so, that was. You can bounce the gin here and dig with Niall, I assume, is going to be the play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah what, so what a draw that now was. He has a, now he has a chump blocker for a turn. So, um, you know, I, I think I think the card he's looking for, well, there, there could be a few cards, but a herd migration must be on the mind here as a card he would very much like. So, what did he find? He, he took oh, a tail swipe. He just okay. put this root wall off the board. Yeah, that's fair. Um, you know, there is still the problem of, of the gin. But, uh, yeah, for sure. Niall might be on chump blocking duty here. Well, he might not have a choice. Yeah, Niall uh, is going to have to stand in front, and then he's going to have to, with his one, he's going to have one one draw here to uh, to find something to stop the gym. Yeah, uh, I'm not currently. Maybe he can find that broken wings. Oh well, he found a Talus Lookout, which does block. Okay, and he can he can start attacking here as well. So uh, we see we see whoever has the 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 turn two root walla here. Oh, this Nevada is huge because he's not going to get the oh. lookout trigger. This, oh, the, that's just... yeah, this might just uh, sew up the game here. He's not even going to get the what? trigger. Well, one great draw deserves another. So <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't say that uh, Christopher's draws were great. They were draws that kept him alive. Uh, this Nevada might 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 seal seal the deal. But you know, we see the power of a of a of an early root walla just. You know, how good was the early root wall off for, you know, in the last two games? All right, so he's just showing yep. uh, he's dead here. <laughs> um, yeah, so in game two, we saw Christopher land land the, the two drop and the three drop. In this game, we saw uh, Jordan just land that root wall, and it, it got a lot of damage and got him low enough that uh, he was able to grind out the victory here. So congratulations to Jordan. He's going to finish the week with 17 wins uh, to his eight losses. So he looks like he'll be... Heavily competing for a top eight spot as we go into the final week next week. So, uh, congratulations to <clears throat> to Jordan, and uh, we'll be back later with our next match.